Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is a day that has been well over two years in the making, uh, and for some, it's been a longer historical ride than even that. But during the last two years, I have been engaged in discussions with legislators, with friends, uh, everybody I could grab and say that I think this legislation, uh, giving Martin Luther King Jr. his own day, is important for the state of Arkansas. And the two-year discussion, that led to the passage of this legislation. And the legislation encourages our young people to learn about the decisions of national leaders in times of crisis and on matters of conscience. It also gives, as I have said, Martin Luther King Jr. his own day. And I want to thank uh, Senator Dave Wallace and Representative Grant Hodges for their courage, for their commitment to sponsoring this legislation. And whenever I asked them to sponsor the legislation, they thought they were the loneliest people in the House. <laughs> but they, they've gained many friends and much respect during this process. I want to thank the Legislative Black Caucus. You've been great partners throughout all of this. We've had early discussions. Uh, you've made good suggestions that have improved the bill. And uh, without you, this could not be happen, and it would be uh, without much meaning. And so very grateful for your support. And Representative Vivian Flowers, as chairperson, is here representing the Legislative Black Caucus. I want to recognize Senator Jim Hendren. Yes. Is he here? who spoke eloquently about the respect he learned in the military for those of all races and, all, and diversity. And, uh, uh, you know, it's funny, I made my presentation to the House Education Committee, and the text went out saying we're in trouble. And uh, Senator Hendren came in, uh, but did an outstanding job. Uh, I want to express my appreciation to Representative George McGill. from Fort Smith, I might add, <laughs> who talked about his great, great grandfather, George McGill, who fought in the Civil War. And George, I want you to know, I would call legislators in my office, and I would say, I need you to support this bill. And I called one legislator into the office, and I asked for his support for this bill, and he says, Governor, my constituents think differently. I cannot vote for this, and I cannot support you. This morning, I got an email from that legislator, and I want to read a little bit to you. I will not identify him because I do not have his permission. But he said, Mr. Governor, last week you personally asked me to support SB 519. As you may recall, I regretfully told you that due to the numerous emails, texts, and calls, I would not be able to vote for the separation of MLK and Lee. I want to send you this email to apologize for inadvertently lying to you. You see, after much thought, prayer, soul searching, and I must add, hearing the wonderful speech delivered by my dear friend, George McGill, I voted for it. Oh. <laughs> it goes on and says, I can easily live with my decision, and in fact, I am so proud that I did the right thing. I think what this representative says really reflects what many learn through this process of the debate and of the discussion. And so, Representative McGill, thank you for your speech and those extra votes that you got. <laughs> but Representative McGill spoke about how this legislation creates some space for education, and he also used the term that Arkansas is bigger than its footprint. Mm -hmm. And that is my view of the state, and I think that this legislation reflects that large footprint that we can have and how we can be a signal to the nation. To be quite honest, I expected this debate would divide us. But instead, during the debate, we listened to each other and the conversation 
brought us together. This is an education bill in which the discussion educated each of us. And we learned that history needs to be viewed not just from our own lens, but through the eyes and experiences of others. With that, uh, I want to sign uh, the bill, and then we'll be happy to take any questions. <laughs> This is uh, Senate Bill 519, an act to refine the teaching of history in the classroom to specify development of educational materials and units regarding Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to eliminate the dual status of the joint holiday to specify the teaching of content related to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in conjunction with the corresponding holiday. Uh, I am signing it. And this is the... Uh, First day of spring, isn't it? Yeah. Signed the second day. Spring. Yesterday was Joyce's birthday. <laughs> uh, it is now well. So with that, uh, be happy to take any questions. Governor, you were a part, you gave the keynote address at the 9-11 prayer breakfast for the NAACP with Mr. Charles. Uh, we're <coughs> setting forth a prayer breakfast on April the 4th, uh, the first time from now that we will honor Reverend Dr. King's spiritual DNA. How important is the prayer connection to making this a reality? Uh, it's essential. Uh, and uh, I've Harken back, of course, to Dr. King, who is a man of prayer, uh, and uh, I don't think he could have uh, uh, made the difference in our nation without being sustained by prayer. And so it is important, but it is not just important in his life, it is important in our nation's life and in the life of our community here in Arkansas. So I'm grateful for your prayers and the leadership in that. That's the National Day of Prayer. We're celebrating this day on behalf of Arkansas. Governor, you, uh, uh, there's two other states in the union that uh, have uh, bills that uh, combine the, the Robert Lee and the Martin Luther King. What would you say to the lawmakers? You make that step during the fourth session to say we're going to support this, we're going to back it, came to the committee hearings. What would you say to the other two states uh, that still have these laws on the books in the process that you've gone through to uh, uh, make this change? Well, if they ask me, I would, of course, tell them as to what it meant for our state and the process that we went through, which was a two-year-long, at least, discussion, and uh, how we turned uh, what could be a divisive debate into something that was a real positive for our state and for the General Assembly. And uh, that's all I would tell them. Those are decisions they have to make in their legislative body. Uh, I'm, but, but uh, if I was asked, that's what I would say. Some, some of the opponents are debate on this that question you know, whether this would lead to reevaluation of other symbols of the Confederacy, so Confederate memorials, the, the, the uh, star on the state flag. I guess how, how much part of you think the state needs to go in, in reevaluating some, you know, some of those other symbols that still may be divisive or may cause people to I think we're fine. Uh, the, uh, uh, I suppose there'll always be debate and discussion, but um, uh, our, our, my objective is not to change history, to erase history, or to remove every remembrance of what our country has gone through. Uh, uh, but it's to use that history to reflect and to understand all the different viewpoints that were represented during that dif difficult time in our history and uh, use it as the learning point that this legislation uh, is designed to do. Governor, you invested a lot of political and personal capital in passing this. Is there any reason why you were so passionate about passing this bill? 
uh, it, it, uh, I remember sitting in my office, as I've mentioned two years ago, when the debate was going on downstairs, and the media would ask me, what's your view on it? And I would say it should be separated. So when you arrive at that conclusion, then, uh, and the rightness of that conclusion, that demands action. Uh, I'm, I'm not governor to uh, simply preside at peace for four years. Uh, I, I want to solve problems. I want to address issues. And uh, this is something that uh, I thought was important for our state. Uh, so I made that commitment. And once you do, you're out there. <laughs> and so uh, we followed through. And I'll just say that it was important, the discussions we've had the legislature. I've had, uh, when we have legislators over at the mansion, I would raise this <laughs> issue. I raised this issue a year and a half ago and those kind of conversations. So people through the time saw my commitment to it. and. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, we followed through. But let me just say that this would have never happened, or this didn't happen because I said we needed it. This happened because the General Assembly, represented by those here, came together and said, we agree, and we support that. And many of them, as reflected by the email from that one legislature, they changed their mind during the conversation. Thank goodness people are willing to change their mind yes, and to learn. And so that's, uh, uh, that's why I was passionate about it. But let me emphasize, it wasn't my passion that won the day. It was uh, the reflection. It was the debate. It was the communication and people engaging in it. Did you regret last two years ago not pushing apart? Regret's not the right word uh, because uh, I had a lot on my plate. Uh, the bill, uh, our bill is better as well and good as that bill was. The education component made a difference in the debate this year. So uh, I'm just glad that I learned from that and uh, uh, repurposed my energy to make a difference this session. Governor, there's a college campus carry bill headed your way. Is it on your desk yet and are you going to sign it? It is on my desk, and uh, we'll have a statement on that later today. Uh, during your testimony at the House, you mentioned uh, Baltimore and South Carolina. Uh, so what, how, what kind of statement does this make in that larger national discussion? That if it's possible to heal wounds and bring people together before a tragedy, then that's the right time to do it. And uh, uh, you mentioned prayer. Uh, in South Carolina at that church, I believe that they were in a prayer meeting and that prayer made a difference uh, within the people and their heart. And actually seeing what happened in South Carolina and Baltimore and recognize that any community can be faced with those same challenges, uh, I said, what can we do as a state? And, you know, we've had some town hall or groups and conversations but I think this is also uh, something that you do in advance uh, uh, that prepares hearts and brings people together and diminishes the divide. Governor, another bill that's had your way is uh, the, voter, uh, the uh, legislation to reinstate the voter ID uh, no law here. Have you decided whether or not you're going to sign up? Uh, again, uh, I, I think I've got a little time on that, so uh, we'll make an announcement on that a little bit later. Uh, Governor, time is running out on uh, SB 12, the uh, campus secret police bill that would take effect this afternoon. Uh, unless you veto it, uh, any action plan in the next two or three hours? Uh, uh, I was just trying to think. Is, do I have, is today the last day on that bill? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you've you got, you got about two and a half hours. <laughs> Well, as I've said, I'll always look at those with uh, strict scrutiny, and uh, I've got some work to do when I leave the podium. Uh, Miss Annie? Governor, I know you know that I'm a collector of artifacts of history. Will you, my question is, will you provide for me to take a copy signed by you to the Days of Bates, because he was an integral part of our civil rights movement, and would you send one to the Martin Luther King family so that they will have one wow. in their museum. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Those two. Uh, 
I, I would be very honored. I'm honored that you thought of that and asked and would be honored to do that. I'll pick them up. Thank you. <laughs> Governor, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned the political capital that you spent to get this passed. Uh, you've had a pretty good run when you've invested that political capital. What's left here in the last few weeks of the session that you want to throw weight behind as it comes your way? Well, a large part of it is uh, uh, making sure that uh, bad bills don't get to my desk. And so uh, I think everybody here is anxious to go home. Uh, we've done some great work here. Uh, we're working hard on the uh, budget, uh, and uh, uh, we've got some more work to do on that. So we want to finish strong, uh, and we, uh, uh, I hope that we can leave here uh, with the positive emphasis on uh, the legislation that we've passed that's good for our state like this and many other bills that we've done together. Uh, so uh, uh, my main objective is uh, let's wrap up strong and, uh, and concentrate on getting a good budget out of here for the next biennium. Is there anyone that you've got like circled that said, I really want to see this one finish as strong as you want for the whole session? Our, you know, I, I identified 13 bills that were my priorities. All 13 have been passed. And so uh, uh, my agenda is finished. Uh, you know, I've also indicated that I've, uh, that I've said that there's not need for certain bills. And so <laughs> those are still pending. There's still a lot of debate that's going on, and they're passionate about that debate. Uh, you know, even though I'm at a, on a different floor in this capital, I want to engage in that, and uh, that's part of my uh, agenda as well, is just to uh, make sure that we don't uh, uh, pass laws that uh, are unnecessary and cause unintended damage to our state. Governor, when you uh, passed your tax cut bill earlier this year, you uh, commissioned the Blue Ribbon Panel to discuss uh, future tax cuts, uh, looking at our tax code. Uh, once that begins, what, what are you hoping to accomplish from that process? Uh, well, a lot more than we originally planned, actually. Uh, uh, the uh, tax, uh, the legislative uh, uh, tax task force, or Blue Ribbon Panel, uh, has a very important job of looking at our, our tax code as a whole, but I think you'll see in the coming days that there'll be many ideas on the table that they're going to refer to that committee and say that this committee can take the role in determining how to use tax resources uh, and also, uh, uh, you know, might even look at the, the highway issue. And, and so I think that portfolio of that commission is broader than we expected. I'd like to first focus on the tax reform aspect of it, fairness, simplicity, uh, but there'll be these other issues that I uh, sense uh, will be referred to them as well. One final question. Yes, our comment. That uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Governor, I was at that uh, education committee meeting two years ago, and after that experience, I didn't think that this would ever happen because of you that it did happen. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. All right, we got some signing to do. Right. Thank you all.